After the bittersweet conclusion of Starship 33 on Flight 7, the whole space community is now turning its attention to the highly anticipated Starship Flight 8. When will Flight 8 get cleared for launch? Is the end of February a firm launch date as stated in their FCC filing? To be honest, the answer is still kind of uncertain, especially after the FAA recently released the first key details regarding its investigation into the Starship explosion. What exactly did they announce? Could this be bad news for Flight 8? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. But first, we need your support. Our next goal is 120,000 subscribers. Let's hit that subscribe button so you'll never miss any of our episodes. Of course, we strive to get better in every possible way. And thank you so much for watching. On January 16th, SpaceX's Starship testing program encountered a significant setback during its seventh flight. After eight minutes into the mission, the upper stage of the spacecraft suffered a critical failure, scattering debris across the Atlantic and the Turks and Caicos Islands. As dust settled, local witnesses saw a striking yet unintended spectacle. Fiery fragments streaking across the sky. Soon after, residents and tourists in Turks and Caicos began discovering and collecting debris, most of which were small fragments believed to be from the spacecraft's thermal protection system. Unsurprisingly, the FAA swiftly grounded Starship flights and launched an investigation the day after. The FAA's inquiry is still ongoing, and its findings on the root cause and consequences of the failure could lead to new requirements for SpaceX to modify the current launch license. This is particularly crucial for the timeline and objectives of Starship's Flight 8, an upcoming mission that the space community has been eagerly awaiting. Experts and enthusiasts hope to see the advancements and capabilities of Starship V2 while remaining concerned about the potential challenges this project might be facing. Recently, the FAA disclosed the first details of its investigation into the aftermath of the explosion when the debris fell near coastal areas that were close to residential areas. After the Starship broke out, the FAA activated a debris response area, which meant that the agency briefly locked down airspace near Turks and Caicos. The U.S. agency licenses commercial rocket launches and is overseeing an investigation into the incident. The DRA alert and resulting flight diversions led to a cascade of travel delays. Debris has now been found all over the islands, according to a database put together by local environmental groups, Turks and Caicos Relief Fund, in partnership with the government's Department of Environment and Coastal Resources. The wreckage has been washed up on every beach on the Providenciales, as well as from South Caicos to West Caicos, which essentially spans the entirety of the Caicos Bank, said Alizy Zimmerman, the executive director of the Turks and Caicos Reef Fund, a U.S. registered nonprofit. Reports also include at least one case of property damage. Zimmerman stated the debris was believed to have struck a car near South Caicos. However, an FAA spokesperson said last week the FAA confirmed one report of minor damage to a vehicle located in South Caicos. To date, there are no other reports of damage. It remains unclear whether the car owner in South Caicos will file a claim for compensation from SpaceX. If they do, it would be the first ever claim of this kind related to a commercial rocket accident under FAA oversight. For every Starship launch, the FAA requires SpaceX to maintain at least half a billion dollars in liability insurance to cover said claims. It's extremely rare for debris from U.S. rockets to fall to the ground during a launch, typically only occurring when a mission fails at a certain point in flight. There are no known public records of any third-party property damage claims in the era of commercial spaceflight. Under federal law, the U.S. government would cover damages beyond the company's policy if any claims exceeded the insured amount. Last year, a Florida homeowner filed a claim with NASA for damage to their house caused by falling debris from the ISS. Meanwhile, authorities in Turks and Caicos stated that the local officials met with SpaceX reps and the UK's Air Accidents Investigation Branch on January 25th to develop a plan for recovering debris that fell onto the islands, which are a British overseas territory, raising a crucial question. Are these launches really that safe? Starship is still a work in progress. It's still prone to explosive failures. Unlike NASA and some of the aerospace competitors, SpaceX embraces a strategy known as rapid iterative development. This approach prioritizes building and testing prototypes quickly, even at the cost of increased risk during live test flights. 
These flights are conducted from Starbase, SpaceX's facility on the southernmost tip of Texas. Starship's previous flights have ended in explosions over the Gulf of Mexico and other oceanic regions. The very first test mission even destroyed a launch pad in South Texas, scattering debris over a wide area and triggering backlash from environmental groups. However, the Jan 16th test flight was particularly noteworthy because Starship's failure occurred near populated islands, raising concerns about public safety. SpaceX argues that its rapid iterative development method allows engineers to improve Starship's design faster compared to traditional approaches that rely heavily on extensive ground testing. However, this strategy also puts SpaceX under intense scrutiny whenever a test flight goes awry. For some, the latest incident has raised concerns. Alina Zavet, a Florida resident who was visiting Turks and Caicos at the time of the explosion, expressed her worries. Just witnessing the explosion and actually seeing debris fall around makes us question everything. Is this really that safe? In response to questions, the FAA issued a statement clarifying that the government of Turks and Caicos has been informed in advance that the nation was located within a potential hazard zone. The FAA also explained that before approving the test flight, SpaceX was required to map out hazard zones to ensure that the probability of injury or fatality for a member of the public, whether on land or sea, remained below one in a million. No Caribbean islands, including Turks and Caicos, exceeded this threshold, the agency stated. Despite these assurances, many questions remain about the safety and risks associated with Starship's aggressive test flights. However, the company has no intention of abandoning their ambitions. SpaceX will undoubtedly move quickly to address the findings of the investigation, aiming to accelerate towards their eighth test flight. While SpaceX has yet to officially announce the schedule and objectives for the next test, it's likely that they will attempt to complete the goals left unfinished from the previous mission. Among the key missed tests was the simulated satellite deployment in space, a crucial demonstration of Starship's payload delivery capabilities, as well as testing improved heat shield materials during atmospheric reentry over the Indian Ocean. Notably, the January 16th flight marked the debut of the upgraded Starship version known as Version 2 Block 2, which features a significantly increased height. The upcoming flight is also expected to use this enhanced version. According to filings submitted to the FCC, SpaceX could launch the next flight as early as Feb 24th. SpaceX team is optimistic about launching by the end of the month. However, before Flight 8 can take off, SpaceX needs to conclude the FAA-mandated investigations, finalize the installations of 39 Raptor engines, conduct tests on both the booster and the spacecraft, and assemble the two components into a fully integrated vehicle standing at 123 meters tall. More importantly, SpaceX has to wait for the FAA to issue a new launch license following the completion of the Flight 7 investigation. This will ultimately determine whether the next flight can go off as planned. Of course, we can trust in the FAA's fairness, not only because of transparency, but also due to the changes within the agency under the Trump administration. Last Thursday, President Trump appointed Chris Rochelau, a 22-year FAA vet, as the agency's acting admin. Trump described Rochelot as a highly respected individual. The FAA's most recent administrator, Mike Whitaker, resigned when President Trump took office. Whitaker served the role for 15 months, facing criticism in his last months from prominent Trump supporter and now White House official Elon Musk, who was frustrated with the agency's oversight of SpaceX. The Elon Whitaker feud goes back to two SpaceX launches in the summer of 2023 before Whitaker had even taken over at the FAA. In a September 17, 2024 post on its website, the FAA said that in June 2023, SpaceX used a new launch control room for an uncrewed satellite mission that had not been approved by the FAA. It also failed to conduct a required and routine safety poll of flight controllers before the launch, according to the FAA. The FAA proposed fines of $175,000 for each of those violations. The next month, the administration charged SpaceX used rocket fuel from a rocket propellant farm that had not been FAA approved. That violation resulted in a $283,000 penalty. The company was given 30 days to appeal the fine, which totaled $633,000. Safety drives everything we do at the FAA, including a legal responsibility for the safety oversight of companies with commercial space transport licenses, said FAA Chief Counsel Mark Nichols in a statement at the time. Failure of a company to comply with the safety requirements will result in consequences. Elon hit back with his pair of X posts in another one September 17th last year, warning that SpaceX will be filing suit against the FAA for overreach. 
Two days later, SpaceX sent publicly posted letters to Congress objecting to the fines, adding that for nearly two years, SpaceX has voiced its concerns with the FAA's inability to keep pace with the commercial spaceflight industry. It is clear that the agency lacks the resources to timely review licensing materials, but also focuses its limited resources on areas unrelated to public safety. These distractions continue to threaten national priorities and undercut American industry's ability to innovate. Whitaker got his chance to respond five days later, September 24th, when he testified before the House of Reps Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure Subcommittee on Aviation, saying, They, SpaceX, have been around 20 years, and I think they need to operate at the highest level of safety, and that includes adopting a safety management program. That includes having a whistleblower program. They launched without a permit. Fines are the only tool we have to get compliance on these safety matters. At the same hearing, Whitaker addressed the FAA's plans to delay the fifth launch of the Starship rocket until at least November of last year, blaming the decision on SpaceX's failure to conduct a proper sonic boom management impact study and its alleged use of unclean water to cool the launch pad in its deluge system. In a blog post, SpaceX wrote, Environmental regulations and mitigation serve a noble purpose, stemming from common-sense safeguards to enable progress while preventing undue impact to the environment. However, with the licensing process being drawn out for Flight 5, we find ourselves delayed for unreasonable and exacerbating reasons. SpaceX added and posted a more pointed letter to a friendly House committee member Kevin Riley out of California, who had questioned Whitaker about the treatment SpaceX was getting at the hands of the FAA compared to Boeing, whose defective Starliner spacecraft has stranded two NASA astronauts aboard the ISS since June of last year on a mission that was supposed to just last eight days. Kylie said that the FAA's reaction to the Starship problems put in sharp relief an issue that many have raised regarding perhaps the undue scrutiny that the agency is giving to SpaceX. SpaceX agreed, saying in its letter to Kylie, SpaceX writes to thank you for taking the opportunity to seek answers from the FAA admin, Mike Whitaker, on the licensing challenges related to commercial space launch. SpaceX rejects any allegations from the FAA that SpaceX has violated any laws. The fifth Starship launch ultimately was cleared to fly October 13th of last year, ahead of the FAA's November projection. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.